What's up guys, Sean the Bro here, and in today's episode of the First Person Shooter tutorial series, we are going to be going over gamepad and controller inputs. So the game by default handles some keyboard inputs, some controller inputs, but when we want to actually make our game work with the controller or with the gamepad, we need to manually add those inputs and bind them ourselves. If we go into our game here, and I have a controller right here, as well as my keyboard, so when the game loads up, we should be able to control the game with our keyboard. Now I have some limited functionality by default, which is what you're seeing right here. So I have the ability to look around, to shoot my weapon, and walk and jump. But I can't reload, I can't switch weapons, I can't equip anything unless I use my keyboard, which will still work at this point. So today's episode is going to be making everything work for the controller. That way we can actually just play on our controller like we would any other game. It's a really nice quality of life improvement and it's very simple to implement. Before we get into the actual logic, if you're interested in checking out the entire series so you can see how we've done enemies, the mini map, our different weapons, all these fun things, I'll link you to the entire playlist of the first person shooter tutorial series right here. Alternatively, if you don't care about that, but you care about the controller and gamepad inputs, I'll link you to where we set this behavior up initially, right here in the top right corner, because we are going to be building on top of that logic today. Now, with everything out of the way, let's go ahead and get started. So, the very first thing that you're going to notice when we come in here is that we're in Unreal Engine 5.1. So, we were previously on 5.0 in the series. I've upgraded it to 5.1, so we can also do enhanced input if we want. I do have episodes on that that I'll link later in the episode, but just be aware I did do that and I'll show you the changes that are required to use your FPS tutorial series in 5.1. We need to go in and actually add our input actions. Go to edit project settings. Now let's scroll down to our input if we're using our regular input action system. Open up action mappings and in here you'll see that we have all of our input actions. Now the ones that were created by default by the template were jump, fire, reset VR, and for our axis mappings we have move forward, move right, turn right, turn, look up right, and look up. So everything that's open right now is something that was initially in the first person shooter template. Be aware that a lot of these already have gamepad buttons. So jump for example is spacebar on the keyboard or gamepad face button bottom. It even has motion controls as well. Fire is left mouse button but also gamepad right trigger. Reset VR only has motion controllers, but we don't actually need that one for today's episode, so I'm going to close it. For the axes, we have move forward, which uses the gamepad left thumbstick Y axis. Move right, which uses gamepad left thumbstick X axis. Turn right, which uses the gamepad right thumbstick X axis. Turn, which is just mouse X, so we don't need it for today's episode. Look up right, which is the gamepad right thumbstick Y axis. And look up, which is just mouse Y, which we also don't need for today's episode. So all these input actions that are already open, we don't have to edit unless you want to change the specific keys. So you just change the ones that I mentioned. I'm going to close them now. And we're now going to add our own inputs live for all these other ones. So the first one is sprint. So to sprint, I want to click my left stick in. So I can press add on the sprint and gamepad left thumbstick button. This is when we click the left thumbstick button. Be aware these inputs are actually for X input devices such as Xbox controllers. If it's a D input device like a PlayStation controller, it might not work the same. It does depend on the controller, but if you're having trouble, it's very possible that's why. We will cover D input controllers as well in this series, but for now this is primarily X input controllers. For zoom in, this is like aiming down sights, so it's usually the right mouse button, but we're going to add one. I'm going to use the gamepad left trigger. Reload. I'm going to make this my X button on an Xbox controller. So that is my gamepad left face button. These are my abilities for activate ability 1 and 2. I will set them to something random. Let's use the Y button. And for ability 2, let's go ahead and use one of our D-pad inputs maybe. Actually, let's make these abilities D-pad inputs. Let's do D-pad left for ability one and D-pad right for ability two. Switch primary. This is to switch my primary weapon. So we're going to make that the gamepad face button top.
interact. This is if we want to be able to go up to something and interact with it, like a door or even equipping a weapon or something like that. A lot of games do this differently. Many of them will treat this the same as reload, which we can do. And you can reload and interact at the same time until we set up input priority, or you could set up a different button for it. For now, I say let's not complicate things. Let's add it as gamepad left button. But we'll worry about input priority later. Crouch, Q crouch down. Let's add another one for the D-pad, the D-pad down. Start is our actual start button, and that is gamepad special right. Perfect. So those are all of our inputs for our gamepad and controllers. Now, we only have this tilt right axis mapping that we have to deal with. So this is tilting left and right, like around a corner. Or leaning, you might be familiar with it as. So let's go ahead and add two inputs for this as well for a left and a right. So make sure our left has a scale of negative one, our right has a scale of one. We can make these our shoulders or our bumpers. So let's say left shoulder, gamepad left shoulder. And for right, we'll use gamepad right shoulder. There we go. Now all of our inputs are set up. Now there's a few more things I wanna do before we actually test this. So first things first, I wanna mention here, if you wanna use enhanced inputs you can go ahead and click this link in the top right corner where i've set up a basic enhanced input system i have an episode in both code and blueprint this is a code and blueprint tutorial series so i went ahead and linked the one that has c plus plus but either way will work that's a different and a newer input system than the input actions i just showed you and you can do everything i just showed you in that input system if you'd prefer but it's up to you it's your choice as long as you have access to them in your version of unreal either one will work now, additionally, I want to show you if you do upgrade to 5.1 like I have, then we need to make a small adjustment to the code before we continue. So in 5.1, the transition from 5.1 to 5.0, the matinee camera shake was removed and it was replaced with the legacy camera shake. So we set up a damage shake and a sprint shake previously in the series. We need to go to both those classes and specifically the header files. So base damage shake.h base sprint shake that h. I've commented out the lines that we need to replace. So if you've been following the series, it will look like this here. So to be class, your project name, underscore API, this class name, colon public, and then it will say you matinee camera shake. I've replaced that with you legacy camera shake now. So you can get rid of this part right there. Now, additionally, they changed the name of the include. So the class previously that we were using was the matinee camera. So we were including matinee camera shake.h, but we don't need that one anymore. We're using legacy camera shake.h. So just make sure to make that small adjustment and do it for all your camera shakes. You can do it in the base sprint shake as well. So you see I have legacy camera shake.h and we are using the legacy camera shake as the parent to the sprint shake. At this point, we can launch the editor again, and it should build properly even in 5.1. I do have episodes on converting our project if you run into any trouble with that. Excellent, so the project is back open. Now we can go ahead and test it out with the new changes. So if I load up the game, I don't have menu controls set up for keyboard or controller yet, but it will be simple to do after this episode. So let's use our mouse to go to the campaign. Then once it loads up, we can use our controller, and we should now be able to do everything that we want to do. So we can shoot, we can aim down sights, we can reload. We can't change weapons because we don't have a weapon yet, so we need to interact, interact with the bruiser, which I was able to do. And now I'm going to press Y to change weapons, which I can do. I should also be able to interact with the weapon on the ground and drop my weapon, pick up this weapon instead, which we can do. I should be able to press down to crouch, left to use my left ability, right to use my right ability. You can see that they are working. Jump should still work. Shoulders for leaning, so it's very easy. If we go up to a wall, lean right. And if we go up this way, lean left. We should be able to pause the game with start. We technically don't have any gamepad or keyboard inputs on the menu. We have to use our mouse, so just resume. Click in the left stick to sprint. And I believe that is everything for now. Now there's some things we will want to adjust, like turn rate. As it's much different on here than it is with the mouse. 
so you can change your sensitivity. But actually, that's the next topic we're going to be covering, so we'll cover changing the sensitivity on mouse and game pads in the next episode. Anyway, guys, that's all I got for you today, so thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed, please subscribe and consider joining the Patreon, YouTube membership, or Discord subscriptions to support the channel further and get extra benefits along the way. If you ran into any issues while following this tutorial or any of my tutorials, feel free to join the Discord community. There's a link in the description, and I'd be happy to help you out. Otherwise, guys, that's all I got, so thank you so much for watching. I'm Sean the Bro, and I'll see you in the next one. Goodbye, guys.